Hello and welcome back to the uh, Math 050 Notes. Okay, we're uh, talking about section 10.5. This is one of my favorite sections. What we're going to be doing, we're going to be multiplying uh, polynomials. So we're going to multiply monomials together. That's the first thing we're going to do. Then we're going to do monomial times any polynomial. And then we're going to multiply two binomials together. We'll have some strategies on doing that. And then we'll multiply any two polynomials. So remember... Um, the one thing I want to talk about here is this thing called the commutative property, okay? Um, and this is going to help with you guys uh, really being able to kind of, you know, really tackle some math and, uh, you know, give you like kind of like a creative edge, if you will, um, in math. So the commutative property is this. Um, I think of the word reorder when I think of the community property, okay? And it's really important that we can do that, all right? So especially with multiplication, um, and let's just think of an example, okay? And my example is this. Uh, I can take three times two, okay? That answer is going to give me six, okay? Now, what I could do is I could reorder this. If I'm multiplying things, I can reorder them, and I should get the same thing. So if I do 2 times 3, that's also going to give me 6. Okay, so I can reorder in any way that I want to make it a little bit easier, and you should get the same thing as a result. Okay, so what I want to do is kind of just jump in here real quick and talk about multiplying these monomials together. So if I were to take, say, the quantity 3x and multiply it by the quantity 4x, then I can do this in my head really quick, but I want to show you guys why it works and kind of a way that, um, you know, you can do this um, without, uh, you know, ever getting these wrong. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reorder this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my numbers out front. I'm going to do three. Well, let me do it this way. What we're doing, uh, I'm going to do three times x times four times x, okay? Even though we're taking this quantity here, and multiplying it by this quantity here, because I'm multiplying 3 and x, I'm really just multiplying all these numbers together, okay? Now, because I'm multiplying all these numbers together, I can reorder them. So when I do that, I put my numbers up front, and I'm going to do 3 times 4 times x times x. And what I can do now is I can say, all right, well, what's 3 times 4? Well, that's just going to be 12, and then x times x is just going to give me x squared, and that's it. And that's all I'm doing, okay? And that's my answer. Okay, let's take a look at another one. Okay, and this one's going to be negative x squared times x cubed, all right? So I'm going to get rid of these parentheses here. And I'm going to change this negative to a negative 1, all right? And I do this sometimes, not always. Uh, negative 1 times x squared uh, and then times x cubed, okay? Um, and if there's no number out there, then I assume that it's just a 1 here, okay? So I don't really have to do anything. So I have the negative 1 out here. I'm going to keep that. But I've got negative 1 times uh, x squared times x cubed. And really, remember, what we're doing is we're going to add our exponents. So it's going to be x to the 2 plus 3 power, which is just going to end up giving me negative x to the 5th, okay? And that's that. All right, so if you got to write these out, write them out, okay? If you can just kind of do them in your head, do them in your head, okay? It's kind of up to you, all right? All right, and that's it. That's all I'm doing on those. So reordering is a really, really important thing to do, okay, uh, to help you kind of see what's going on. Uh, some people, I can do this in my head, but guys have been doing this for a long time. So if you need to write out all these steps to do this, then do so. Make sure you get the right answer, okay? All right, the next, thing I, next one I want to do is called multiplying a monomial, which is a one-term polynomial, by any polynomial, okay? And we're going to do these two examples here. All right, so what I'm going to do for this one, uh, and all I'm doing here is the distributive property, okay? I have 5x times this whole quantity. So I have to distribute this 5x into each term of my polynomial, all right? And I'm going to write my answer like this. I'm going to write it as... Um, I'm going to do 5x times 2x squared, um, and then I'm going to do minus, okay, the, the subtraction part kind of can kind of get you kind of messed up, so be careful with that, minus, and then I'm going to do 5x times 3x, 
Okay, plus, and then I'm going to do 5x times 4. Okay, so now what I want to do is, now all I'm doing is multiplying these monomials together. So I got 5x times 2x squared, 5x times 3x, and then 5x times 4. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reorder these, okay, so that they make a little bit more sense. So I'm going to do this as 5 times 2 times x times x squared, okay, minus 5 times 3 times x times x plus 5 times 4 times x, okay. So now what I get here, if I do 5 times 2, that's going to give me 10, all right, and then x times x squared is going to give me x to the 2 plus 1 power, which is x cubed, okay, and then minus 5 times 3, which is 15, uh, and then x times x is going to give me times x squared, uh, plus 5 times 4, that's going to give me 20, and then times x, and so that is my answer, okay, and so all we're doing is multiplying this out, okay, we'd use the distributive property for that, all right. Now, over here, this one's a little bit different because I'm dealing with a negative number here. Okay, negative 2x squared, we're going to multiply it by each of the terms in here, all right? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show I'm going to distribute that, okay? And we're going to multiply it into each of those. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write this out as negative 2x squared times x cubed. Now, here's where it gets a little bit tricky, okay? Okay. I'm taking a negative number out here, and I'm multiplying it by another negative number. And you got to keep your signs straight. So what I typically do is this. Um, you know, the, one of the ways you can do it is to just say, okay, well, a negative times a negative is going to give me a positive. But let's, let's take this one step at a time, okay? And I would do this. I would do minus, and then I would do quantity, negative 2x squared, and then close that quantity, and then I'm going to multiply that by 7x squared, okay? And then I'm going to do plus, all right, and then I'm going to do quantity, negative 2x squared, and quantity, multiply that by 10x, all right? And then... All right, same thing as the other one. I'm going to do minus quantity, negative 2x squared, and that quantity, and then I'm going to multiply that by 4, all right? And so this is kind of a way to make sure that you don't screw up your signs because a lot of times, guys, if you're going to make errors here, they're probably going to be sign errors, okay? And I make them all the time, so I'm living proof. Okay, so now what I want to do is I kind of want to clean this up a little bit, all right? I'm going to rewrite this the same way that I had, all right? So I'm just going to rewrite this as, let me move this over a little bit. I've got negative 2x squared times x cubed. Okay, now here on this step, I'm taking a negative times a negative. I'm subtracting a negative. So I'm going to change this to a plus. I'm going to do plus, and I'm going to write this as 2x squared times 7x squared. Okay, and then the next one, if I'm doing a, um, adding a negative, I'm just going to put a negative there. So minus 2x squared and then times 10x, all right? And then on this last one, because I'm subtracting a negative, okay, I'm going to change that to a plus. Okay, so I'm going to do plus 2x squared and then times 4. Okay, so now that my signs are all straightened out, <coughs> okay, I'm going to kind of reorder this a little bit, okay, I'm going to keep this the same, negative 2x squared times x cubed, I'm going to reorder this and do 2 times 7 times x squared times x squared, uh, minus 2 times 10 times x squared times x, and then I'm going to write out uh, plus 2 times 4 times x squared. All right, so now, okay, um, you know, if I'm adding my uh, exponents here, okay, I'm going to do negative 2 times x to the fifth, okay, plus 14 times x to the 2 plus 2 power, which is 4, okay, minus 20 times x to the 2 plus 1 power, all right, which is going to be 3, and then we've got um, plus 8x squared, 
and that's it, all right? And so that's my answer, all right? And we just multiplied those out, all right? So not too terrible, okay? Um, and again, you know, if you need to show all these steps to get your answers right, to understand the concept of what you're doing, then do that, okay? Uh, most times what I can do, you know, because if you've, if you've done this a lot and you've practiced this enough, uh, you get to a point where you kind of just go from this step to like this step and then maybe this step, okay? kind of depends on how many numbers you have, all right? So now, uh, you know, what I did here was the distributive property, okay? And what I'm going to do on the next part, multiplying binomials, is I'm going to do um, two different methods, three different methods. Okay, I'm going to do the distributive property, okay? And essentially, that is what you are doing. Over here, we have what's called the FOIL method and the BOX method. Now, all three of these will give you the exact same thing. Some people find the distributive property to be very easy. Some people like the FOIL method. Some people like the BOX method. It kind of just depends. I grew up really liking the FOIL method. Um, as, I, as I taught multiplying these out, and uh, what we'll do later, I think, maybe is factoring, um, was... Uh, is using the box method. So I prefer the box method, but I'm going to show you guys all three of these so that you can choose which one you like, okay? Um, and so I'm going to do this first problem. And notice how we have x plus 5 times x plus 4, okay? And that's true for here and here. So I'm going to do all the three of these, the same problem, three different ways, and we'll get to the same answer, okay? And then what I'll do is I'm going to do a different problem all three ways and show you how we get the same answer. All right, so let's do this. Um, multiplying binomials using the distributive property. So one thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take the value x and I'm going to multiply it by x plus 4, okay? So when I do this, um, the distributive property, I'm really doing this. I'm taking x, that value, and I'm multiplying it by x plus 4, okay? And then I'm going to put a plus 5 here. And let me do this. Uh, let me underline that in blue. So I'm going to put a plus 5 here. Um, and then I've got parenthesis x plus 4. Okay. So um, what I want to do now is I want to distribute my x here. And then I'm going to distribute my positive 5. All right. So when I do that, um, that's going to give me x times x plus x times 4, um, and then plus 5 times x plus 5 times, whoops, do this in blue, 5, uh, and then times 4, okay? So if I do x times x, all right, that's just going to give me x squared, okay? Uh, x times 4, I'm going to write that as 4x, okay, you just put the number out front, uh, and then 5 times x is just going to give me plus 5x, and then 5 times 4 is just going to give me plus 20, okay, now the common thing, the, the terms that I can combine are my like terms, and that's going to be the, the 4x and the 5x, okay, and so when I do this, I'm going to get x squared plus 4x plus 5x is going to give me a total of 9x, add your coefficients, keep your variable, and then plus 20, and that's it, okay? And that's all we're doing. All right, so that's the answer, okay? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to then do what's called the FOIL method. And FOIL is an acronym, all right? And so when I do this, I do the first, okay? F stands for first. O stands for outside. I stands for inside, and then L stands for last, okay? Maybe you've seen this before or heard about this. Okay, so what I'm going to do is this, all right? And there's kind of a specific way I do this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the first terms together, okay? And so that's going to give me x times x, all right, which is going to give me x squared, all right? The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the outside terms, so x times 4. And let me make that a little bit bigger. You'll see why here in a second. Okay, x times 4, that's just going to give me 4x. Okay, 4 times x is 4x. Uh, I'm going to do the inside terms, which is 5 and x. So it's going to give me 5x. 
And then I'm going to do my last terms, 5 times 4, okay? And 5 times 4 is equal to 20. So now what I do is I add all of these things up, all right? And that's going to give me this. So I'm going to put it all together, x squared. And let me write it over here, okay? This is going to give me x squared plus 4x plus 5x plus 20, Okay, 4x and 5x is going to add together to give me 9x, so x squared plus 9x and then plus 20. All right, and that's the same thing that we got over here. All right, so it doesn't matter which one you do, as long as you get it right, I don't care. Now, the one way to remember that you do this correctly is that you get what's called a monkey face out of this. All right, and actually, I like to just call this a Mr. Police face or a Joe Po face. I like to put my eyes here. Um, I've got a big mouth right here. Uh, I've got some big giant ears right here. Uh, I've got my head here and a little bit of hair. Um, and these are my eyes. I'm going to draw this guy down here. And then, um, you know, that's my face. All right. And so if you get a face out of that, okay, here are your eyebrows. Here are your eyes. Here's your nose. Okay, if you get a face out of that, then you are doing this correctly, all right? Okay, now let's talk about the box method. Now, I really like the box method. And what I do is I notice that I have a, bi a binomial times a binomial, all right? So I've got two terms here uh, and then two terms here. And so what I do is I draw a two-by-two two box, okay? And what's cool about this is that it's kind of forgiving. It's pretty easy to see what you're doing, and that's that. All right, so I'm going to draw a two-by-two two box. So a two-by-two two means that this is one, two, and this is two. All right, so when I take my first term, my first binomial, which is x plus 5. I'm going to put that here, so x plus 5. I'm going to take my second binomial, which is x plus 4. I'm going to put that down here. All right, now what I'm going to do is, in order to see what goes in this box, I'm going to do x times x. And that's just going to give me x squared, all right? So whatever goes in the box depends on, you know, the row and column. You multiply those together to get what goes what's inside. Okay, here I'm going to do 5 times x, and that's going to give me a 5x. Okay, here I have x times 4, all right? So for this box, it's going to give me a 4x, all right? And then I'm going to do 4 times 5. All right, to go what's in this box, and that's going to give me 20. All right, now I really like this method just because it's simple and it's easy. All right, so then what I have, I want to add up all these things on the inside of the box, and I notice that my like terms are right here, and I, those are across from each other. So what I'm going to end up getting is I'm going to end up getting x squared plus 4x plus 5x gives me 9x, and then plus 20, okay? Now, personally, I find that, um, you know, I'm writing a lot when I use the distributive property. Um, this can be kind of confusing sometimes, but I feel like I'm writing the least amount over here. Okay, so now let's go back through each of these. I'm going to use the distributive property here, the FOIL method here, and then the box method here for this next problem, and then we'll continue on. Okay, and you guys can, can decide which one you like best, okay? And you can choose whichever one. doesn't matter to me. All right, so I'm going to do 4x, multiply that by x minus 2. I'm going to do 3 and multiply that by x minus 2, okay? So I'm going to do 4x times x minus 2, all right? And then I'm going to do plus 3 times x minus 2, all right? So if I distribute my 4 here, 4x... This is going to give me 4x times x minus 4x um, times 2. Uh, this part here is going to give me 3 times x times 3 times negative 2. So I'm going to do plus 3. So 3x, 3 times x, uh, and then minus 3 times 2. All right, so then here's what I've got. I've got 4 times x times x, so that's going to give me 4x squared. Uh, minus 4 times 2 is going to give me 8x uh, plus 3x, and then minus 6. Okay, so if I combine my like terms here, which are my middle terms, uh, negative 8x and 3x, if I add those together, that's going to give me negative 5x. 
Okay, tack down the negative 6 and your 4x squared, and that's your answer. Okay, so that's using the distributive property. All right, so let's do the FOIL method. Okay, and I don't need to write all that stuff out. I'm going to do uh, 4x times x. 4x times x. I'm going to do 4x times negative 2, so plus 4x times negative 2. Um, I'm going to do 3x, so plus 3x. And then my last term, so plus 3 times negative 2. All right, so now, if I've got 4 times x times x, it's going to give me 4x squared. 4 times negative 2 is going to give me minus 8x. Plus 3x, all right, and then minus 6. Okay, so same thing, negative 8 plus 3x is going to give me negative 5x minus 6, and then 4x squared, and that's it, okay? So pretty quick and easy, not too bad. All right, let's do the box method over here now. Now on this one, okay, I'm going to do this over here. I'm going to draw a 2 by 2 box, okay? And so then uh, I'm going to put my 4x and then plus 3 here. I'm going to put my x and then minus 2 over here. All right. So to go what's in my first box, I'm going to do x times 4x. It's going to give me 4x squared. Okay. On the next one, I'm going to do x times 3. So that's going to give me 3x. All right. Um, I'm going to do 4x times negative 2, which is going to give me negative 8x. And then on the last one, I'm going to do negative 2 times 3, which is going to give me positive 6. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to combine my like terms, all right, and add them all together. So what I get as a result is this. I've got 4x squared uh, minus 5x, and then, whoops, this is a minus 6, so this is plus negative 6, all right. So you get the same thing as you do no matter what method you do, okay. But the thing of it is, guys, I want you to be able to, um, you know, multiply these out. Now, here's where it gets tricky, and here's why I prefer some methods over others. The FOIL method only works when you have binomials, okay? Um, it doesn't work when you have, like, say, a trinomial times a binomial, all right? So you got to be careful with what you're doing. So when you have something like this, I really, really, really prefer the box method, all right? And it's just an easier way for me to do this. Typically what I would do is I would use the distributive property, and you can see how much we write when you do this using binomials. Um, so you can still use the distributive property. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to show you the box method because I just think that it's a way easier method to multiply these out, okay? So now, here's what you got to consider. All right, I, I want to write this one with three terms up top, and I'm going to do that as x squared plus 2x and then minus 3, all right? And when I do that, all right, I'm going to create my three columns. Now, the other binomial I had was x squared plus 4, so I'm going to do an x squared and then plus 4, and that has two rows, okay? So let's go ahead and multiply this out, and let's see what we get. All right, so I'm going to do x, to the x squared times x squared. Now, that's just going to give me x to the 2 plus 2 power, which is x to the 4th power. Okay, for this one, x squared times 2x is 2x times x squared. Um, so this is going to give me 2x cubed. Okay, on the next one, I've got negative 3 times x squared, and that's going to give me negative 3x squared. So minus 3x squared. All right, and that's all we're doing. Okay, on the next one, I'm taking 4, and I'm multiplying it by each of these parts in the top. All right, so I've got 4 times x squared, and that's just going to give me 4x squared. Um, and then I've got uh, 4 times 2x. That's going to give me just a positive 8x. And then I've got 4 times negative 3, which is just going to give me a negative 12. Now, the trick here is to add all these up, okay? Um, and notice where you have like terms and where you don't. Now, the only like terms that I have is 4x squared and negative 3x squared, okay? Everything else doesn't have a like term to it, so we don't need to add it, we don't need to combine anything else. So I'm going to write this out as x to the fourth um, plus 2x cubed 
Um, and then if I take 4x and add negative 3x, or I'm sorry, 4x squared minus 3x squared, it's just going to give me a single x squared. So plus x squared, all right, plus 8x, and then minus 12, and that's my answer. Okay, so you, yeah, you just get something like that. All right, let's do this very, very last one. I'm going to continue to use the box method here. Uh, I'm going to use the one with three terms, put that one up top, uh, and that's just kind of out of habit um, to do that. So here's that. Draw this out. Um, and let me do three columns. So I've got 4x cubed minus 2x squared and then plus 3x. And then I've got x squared and then plus 2x. All right, so if I have x squared times 4x cubed, it's going to give me 4 times x squared times x cubed. It's going to give me x to the fifth. You add your exponents, okay? Here I've got x squared times negative 2x squared. So that's going to give me negative 2x to the fourth power, okay? If I have x squared times positive 3x, it's going to give me 3x cubed, okay? All right, on the next one, I've got 2x times 4x cubed, so that's going to give me 8x to the fourth, okay? Um, on this one, so if I do 2x times negative 2x squared, that's going to give me minus 4x cubed, okay? And then on the last term, all right, I've got a 2x times a 3x, and that's going to give me 6x squared, all right, so you can see where, um, how good I've gotten at multiplying these monomials together. So, I mean, all I'm doing down here when I'm, like, multiplying all this stuff is I'm just, I'm just doing this, okay? So this, doing all this stuff will help, um, help you see how to do these a little bit better, but just wanted to clarify that. All right, so now let's combine our like terms, okay? Um, the like terms that I have are going to be ones with x to the fourth and ones with x cubed, okay? So what I want to write out here is I'm going to write 4x to the fifth, okay? Um, and then I've got 8x to the fourth minus 2x to the fourth is going to give me plus 6x to the fourth, okay? On the next one, I've got negative 4x cubed plus, th I'm sorry, uh, my plus 3x cubed, so negative 4 plus 3 is going to give me minus x cubed, all right? And then I'm going to do plus 6x squared from that, and that's my answer, okay? So, uh, yeah, there is a lot going on here. Some of these can be very, very, very long, but um, I trust that um, you guys will choose a method that works for you, and you will stick with it. So um, thanks for watching, and uh, here's your homework, so get started on that. And good luck, and we'll see you later. Thanks a lot. Bye.